All right, in this video, we're going to do transformations on a table. We did a transformations on one point in the previous video, and doing it on a table is nothing more than doing it on a point multiple times. And if you can do that, then um, you're well on your way. The next video, we'll look at doing it on a graph, in which case we'll just take the points from the graph and turn them into a table and then do the transformations on the table. So we're kind of working our way there. But here's a... Uh, the function f, uh, f of x, I've got four x coordinates and four y coordinates. So let's perform these transformations down below. Okay, so for instance, I've got uh, five times f of negative x. So I'm just gonna note what each of those does. So we know that five here, we're gonna, uh, it's outside the the, the um, function f of x, so it's, um, going to result in a transformation on the y values. So specifically, we're going to multiply the y values by 5. And in fact, we can do that right now. So that will result in the values negative 15, negative 15, 20, 35, and negative 40. And then there's this f of negative x. So Again, the, the way I want you to think of transformations affecting x values is we know that f of, we say that f of a equals b, where you think of your a as your old x values. Okay, so you think of a as your old, I'll even write that, it's like your old x values, meaning the ones up here in the table. What we want is f of negative x to also equal b, but that'll only happen if a equals negative x telling us that x equals uh, negative a. So our new x values, our new x values are just going to be the opposite of our old ones. So we go up to our table and we take the opposite of our old x values. So the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. The opposite of 2 is negative 2, negative 5, and negative 9. And there is our table for a. For b, let's note what happens. Let's do the y values first. I see here I'm going to subtract 10 from my y values. Good. So we can do that right away. That's the only transformation affecting y values. So negative 3 minus 10 is negative 13. 4 minus 10 is negative 6, 7 minus 10 is negative 3, and negative 8 minus 10 is negative 18. So the y values are done. What about x values? Well, I see this f of 3x minus 2. Again, if we know in general f of a equals b, a being our old x values, what we want is f of 3x minus 2 to also equal b. And so what that means is we need 3x minus 2 to equal a. So 3x minus 2 equals a would mean that 3x equals a plus 2. And then we divide by 3. So there's, this is like a set of instructions for our new x values. Remember, our, our a value is our old x values. So this is like your new x values is equal to your old x values plus 2 divided by 3. So we're going to take our old x values, divide them by 2, or sorry, add 2, and divide by 3. So our old x value negative 1 plus 2 gives you a positive 1, and then we divide by 3 to get a third. move that down a little bit so it's separated. Um, 2, our old value 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 divided by 3 is 4 thirds. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 divided by 3 is 7 thirds. And 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 divided by 3 is 11 thirds. Okay. What about this third one? This one's a little looks a little trickier at the x values, but again, if you follow the the procedure I'm giving you, then it shouldn't be so bad. So 
Again, this means we're going to subtract 10 from subtract 10 from our from our y values. Why don't we just do that right away? Get the y column set. So we're minusing 10 from these. So negative 3 minus 10 is negative 13. Actually, if you think about it, I just I minus 10 on both of these. So I'm just copying down what I did above, negative 13, negative 6, negative 3, and negative 18. Okay, but what about this transformation here? So we can leave this as it is. I might just, for reasons that have to do more with graphing, when you, when you have to describe what happens to the graph, I'm going to write it like that. It's not really a big deal, but, um, right, so let's say, Let's say we want we want to figure out what x would have to be, the new x values. Again, we start with the fact that if f of a equals b, or a is our old x values, if we want this to equal b, we need those to be the same. So negative x plus 6 over 4 would have to equal a. Times and by 4 gives us negative x plus 6 equals 4a. So therefore negative x is equal to 4a minus 6, and then x equals the opposite of that. So there's our instructions for our new x values. We take our old x values times by 4 minus 6, and then multiply by negative 1. So that's kind of a lot. Let's see if we can do this, or if I can do it in my head. 4a minus 6. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10, times negative 1 is positive 10. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 6 is 2, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Four times 5 is 20, 20 minus 6 is 14, times negative 1 is negative 14. And then the last one is uh, 4 times 9 is 36. 36 minus 6 is 30 times negative 1 is negative 30.